All right, then let's kick off. Um, hello and welcome everybody to the Nosto and Shopware webinar on the anatomy of a successful e-commerce store, um, where we, that is me, uh, Marcus from Shopware and uh, James um, from Nosto will tell you something about how to set up a successful e-commerce store um, based on um, some facts and figures that we found out and based on what you can do with Shopware right out of the box. So I will just kick off and for those of you who don't know who we are, um, we are Shopware and therefore I will just tell you a bit of Shopware itself, um, tell you a bit what you are able to do with the uh, settings right out of the box, what tools you got on hand with Shopware directly and then we're just going into the depth uh, with the James together to see some deeper insights. So who are we? We are Shopware and we have been on the market for 17 years now um, with 130 employees nowadays, all based in shopping in Germany um, on the German land side. So it's really quiet around here, to be honest. Um, we got about more than 1,200 partners. Um, so quite a big network consisting of digital agencies, technology partners like Nosto, for example, but also hosting partners. And therefore, we do have the whole range um, what we need in our ecosystem to be working. We got about more than 60,000 installations worldwide, most of them in the German-speaking market, but some even in the UK, some in the Netherlands. I think we even got one in Australia, for example. So we are spreading our word onto the market. So how do you set up a successful e-commerce store with Shopware? Um, what you always need um, are personalized landing pages and personalized content to speak to the customer directly in the end. Um, you will need individual pages that stand out. You don't want your page to be looking like everybody else's pages. And you want to speak to the customer just in a personal way that he feels, okay, this is something different where I'm going in. And of course, you will need tools which tailor your shop to your own needs as well as to your customers' needs. You want yourself to be working there in a back end which is completely useful for you and gives you the tools you need and makes it easy to handle as well as your customer needs an easy journey through the shop itself and just browse through and not feel like he's buying something but take him on a journey, for example. So for the personalized landing pages, for example, we do have our new feature, the customer streams, um, which you can use to uh, tailor certain products um, onto the customer you want them to see. So for example, um, we want our, uh, our customer group of uh, young women, um, which have uh, bought for more than 100 euro uh, from the band Kimsey, for example, um, in the last year, we want uh, to show certain products to this customer group. In order to do so, we can set up such a customer stream and filter all the products we want to have in there um, with a product stream, for example, into the customer stream for the certain um, uh, recipes. We can use those customer streams to fill our newsletter, for example, or to fill uh, out a voucher which the certain uh, customer group can use, or to even set up a landing page only specialized for those customers which we want to see. Um, some of you may know our feature, the shopping world. Um, and many customers have been asking us um, if it is, able, is it possible to set up a shopping world or a preset. And we now did this feature. So um, you can take your customer on a journey, you can set up the shopping world yourself, but you can also set up one that has been pre-configured by any other person or in another shop. You can just download it, import it into your backend and add your pictures, add your um, products, and then it will just be working. So it's just a few clicks away to set up a real good looking emotional shopping um, event. We also have a new listing. Um, there you can have the option to set up uh, intuitive filter and sorting options like you have on the side, on the left side, for example, the different filters. 
where you can just set up, okay, I want this to be uh, triggered uh, by this or by that, and just differ between whatever you got. You don't only have to differ between the normal things, just like size or like price. You can also set up filters which are completely configured to your own or your customer's needs. So if you can see, okay, they're always looking in my search bar for a certain thing, then why don't you set up a filter for this and just do it completely individual for your customer. Also, the sorting can be quite uh, slightly different. So you set up, okay, I don't only want this to be sorted by price, but maybe by color, um, maybe something completely different. So it makes no sense for the customer himself, but only for you. So you can sell the products which you want to sell to them. And of course, you can buy directly out of the listing. So you can just set, uh, click on uh, uh, one of the products, add it to your, um, to your purchase, and it will pop up uh, directly uh, off Canvas menu where you see what you purchased for your shopping cart. And then you can just go back into the listing. This means that your customer won't have to leave the page and can just browse through his journey uh, where he wanted it to be. He doesn't have to switch any pages, open a new tab, for example. Just make it as easy as possible for the customer himself. So we now have what we need for a personalized landing page. Um, for example, um, we do have all the tools which we need. But of course, this has been pretty rudimentary and simple. So we're now going in depth with James together, um, where he will show you something about the anatomy of the shop itself. So how to set up different pages and how to deal with it really in detail. So now I will hand over to James and therefore James, the audience is yours. Thanks very much, Marcus. Uh, I'll just kick things off now. So uh, for those of you that don't know, um, I'm James White, Head of Business Development at Nosto. I'm just going to move this off my screen. There you go. Head of Business Development at Nosto. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit uh, today about the anatomy of an e-commerce uh, store, or mostly successful ones, hopefully, as well. Uh, this is based on our um, content piece that we produced um, a couple of months ago that you can also download uh, from nosto.com forward slash resources. So if anything's unclear or you need any more help from, from, uh, from us, you can go to download there. So let's, um, let's come in and take a look at uh, what we're going to cover today. So a little bit about the buying, the buying journey of a customer. Um, some tips for your online stores based on not just Nosto customers, but some best practice from, from around the web. Uh, some actionable advice that you, can, that you can put together today, whether you're using Nosto or not. And maybe you're looking at a site redesign or just looking at personalization as, a, as something that you want to get, get going with on your website. Hopefully we'll provide some, some insight there uh, that will be, that'll be useful to you guys. So one of the first kind of key considerations uh, with an online store is that you're, you don't have the, the kind of merchandising in store, you don't have a, a sales assistant, you know, someone lovely who can go up to a customer, grab hold of them, sell to them. It's the job of your, your digital shop front to do, that, uh, to do that for you. And so there's a variety of different, um, different tools and, and you know, Shopware as a platform, uh, bits and pieces like Nosto, uh, platforms like Nosto, Dotmailer, um, search uh, tools like Clevu, for example, those all come together to form, you know, what we call like the, the incremental tools adding value to, to the e-commerce storefront. But I think if we, if we for now focus on, on personalization and the particular um, the particular page types that, that you as an e-commerce manager or marketeer would be focusing on optimizing. If we take a look at the homepage, for example, we know that from, uh, from, from, from data that, that we've looked at over the years that the average, uh, average customer takes about three seconds to decide whether they think that store is going to give them the product that they're looking for. They might click through from a Google Shopping recommendation, uh, a retargeting ad, 
or even a you know banner acquisition ad on something like the Daily Mail or or um, New York Times uh, website. And so you need to make an impression instantly with uh, some key elements like Marcus was talking about there. So landing pages uh, on on the personalization side, making sure you making sure you show the right product to that customer at the right time, whether it be on the home page, a category landing page. Or even a you know a product page directly from from Google Shopping. So uh, a couple of average averages for you here, um, but the the average uh, conversion rate of an e-com store is is between two and three uh, percent. Obviously, that varies. Usually, you've got some luxury brands with very low conversion rate at zero point one percent, but with an average order value of let's say two thousand pounds, and then you get the other end of the scale with an extremely high conversion rate. Um, and, and probably an AOV, let's say, in the region of fifty pounds, but it, it varies hugely. When you look at Amazon, however, selling TVs for a thousand pounds and um, plastic pens for fifty pence, their conversion rate is thirteen percent um, across the board, which is hugely, hugely successful. And, and one of the the main kind of uh, assets or, 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 or um, factors that influence that, I think is personalization. We've all been exposed to it um, on Amazon. They're very good at knowing what you want, when you want it, either showing it to you in banners, email, um, on social, uh, they're just plastering you with um, with useful and, and, and relevant products, I think is the, the, the key there. So when we're looking at a home page, um, how do we make sure that we show the right products to the right person? And how do we make sure that the whole experience feels relevant to them? So there's a couple of different customer groups that you have here typically. Uh, you've got your repeat customers, those who have ordered before. You've got customers who've simply browsed the site before. They've looked around, they know the brand, but they haven't committed to buying yet. And then you've also got um, customers who are brand new to the site. So those are a key customer for you. You need to win them, win them over in that five seconds period. And what we think works really well is is focusing on on new lines, um, and also you can merchandise your best sellers around products with high numbers of reviews. So like only show products with five stars and a minimum of five reviews, for example. Another great uh, element that Amazon uh, likes to use show off the reviews it's really powerful to add social proof especially for new customers that don't that don't know your brand then for those that do know your brand and are returning for the second third fourth time maybe to make their second purchase even here we can start to leverage well for a start titles like recommended for you or because you bought we think you'd like this with a tool like Nosto, for example, you can do that dynamically. So recognize the new customer, show them the merchandise bestsellers, recognize the, uh, the repeat browser, really try to lure them in with um, recently, recently viewed or, or browsing history related to show them some ideas that they won't have seen yet, but we know that they'll be interested in based on what they've browsed or added to the cart before. And then finally, order-related recommendations. Great in fashion when you've recently bought, let's say, uh, a shirt. I know that because that person, or Nosto knows that because someone bought that shirt, they're very likely to be looking for possibly a tie, another shirt that's similar, or possibly a suit, as a male example. It's also uh, re really important to highlight search. I touched on it earlier uh, with, with Klebu, for example, or, or a whole load of other search solutions that you, that you could look into. Algolia is, a, is another great tool. But making sure that the search box is really prominent. If you look again at, at Amazon or some sites that with, a, with much larger catalogs, they bring the search box to the front. Rather than hiding up in like the right-hand corner, as you typically see, they might put it as part of the header bar. And that just really invites people to search, find product quickly and easily, take them straight to it, and, and find what they want. Uh, obviously with the goal of driving conversions. Also, I think it's it's really important to promote discount items. So at least to discount-orientated customers, what you can do is look at 
them as a customer segment or their behavior previously have they looked at only discounts perhaps that customer is is only receptive to discounts you can flesh that out not just on the site but in like an email segment for example as well uh, and possibly even uh, an ad segment next step after the the home page is obviously the category page um, these, are, these can be used as, as landing pages. You, so you might have someone searching for women's boots, for example, and your Google campaign might send them into the, the women's boots campaign, uh, category page, sorry. For example, with Made, it might be, I'm searching for sofas, and Made lands you on the, on the sofas category. So really important to put your largest categories with the biggest headings, like we can see here in, in the Made example. So we've got sofas, dining, bedroom, uh, storage, lighting, those key, key categories that they want people to jump into first. And then you might have on hover um, subcategories or even towards the end or in, in, um, in smaller font, the subcategories. Uh, one one uh, kind of fact that's been brought up um, by, by a consultant in the past was no more than, than seven main categories. It's too distracting for customers. Uh, it's all about channeling them into products that, that they'll be interested in quickly. Um, you know, so perhaps categories that you're known for, um, all those different kind of brand attributes that, that you can leverage. Uh, also choosing the names of your, your categories carefully. So A, from a customer point of view, so they can quickly and easily uh, find what they're looking for. You don't want to confuse the customer, give them a bad user experience. Uh, but also for SEO purposes, so when customers are searching for sofas, make sure the category matches sofas so you, that you don't get um, a negative Google rating when you've maybe promised them sofas in the keyword, but then actually taken them to sofa beds or, or, or chairs even, you know, something completely irrelevant. Um, obviously, it's, it's really important on the category pages, particularly with big categories, to leverage uh, filtering. So... When you're looking at perhaps a large like a department store again if we use fashion as an example so size particularly important there you don't want to show customers product that's um, in the wrong size so then you might show it in the category but that's because it's only available in double xl that's not relevant for me i'm generally medium the worst thing that can happen is i click on that product really wanting it it's out of stock so really um, giving your customers a, a kind of wide filter box with price, uh, size, I think is really important. Color can be, can be relevant as well. Obviously, it depends a lot on, on uh, the type of store that you're, that you're operating. And obviously, really relevant that the, that the filters are seasonal. So in the UK, it can be difficult. We've just had a massive heat wave, and now it's miserable and raining. So very difficult to gauge there, but you might have like light, light rain jackets and uh, and t-shirts and shorts rather than uh, roll necks and a big winter coat or you know winter jackets that you might feature as a as a as a prominent filter come uh, September October time. So we've done a couple of cool things for customers in, in terms of um, category based filtering, but. Um, one of the the things that I really like is is actually merging personalization as part of the the category page. So where you've got the top listings, you might actually show the most popular products in the category, or you might show something you know browsing history related or personalized recommendations within that same category. So the top row is not just maybe the products that you've merchandised there, but actually the the four or five products most relevant to that individual customer. So product page, definitely my favorite and, and probably the most, the most important page. You can drive a lot of traffic there from, from paid, um, particularly uh, you know, dynamic product ads on Facebook or Instagram. Customers click through from those directly to the product page. They want to get um, a good feel for the product quickly um, and the relevant information for that so we've mentioned here a couple of things so high-res images um, always important there's nothing worse than a grainy image detailed descriptions what's the product what are the key facts 
Um, again, taking you back to fashion, let's say you're buying a, a ski jacket. Is it waterproof? What's the temperature it's, it's warm up to in general? Is it suitable for you know all the different attributes that you'd be expecting? And then one thing that, that we found is super important on the personalization front is uh, the alternatives and uh, supplementary items. So again, when I look at uh, myself, I go to look, I want to buy a shirt, you know, a work shirt. I don't, I click on the, the product that I think I like. Actually, I get the, the high res image. I get the hover over it. I'm not hundred percent sure about it. Where are the alternatives? They are the most clicked on recommendation um, over the, the supplementary items. When I'm looking for shirts, I want to see other shirts. I don't want the outfit first, I want the other shirts that might suit me. And that's where really relevant examples based on crowd data, not, not necessarily merchandising, not necessarily what I believe is the right thing, but actually what your customers are telling you are bought after viewing this product, for example. And then obviously the, the average order increase, um, supplementary items are really important. So when you're looking at this shirt, you often want this tie. Or when you're looking at this skirt, you might be wanting this blouse, this pair of shoes, or this accessory. And on those, uh, on those items, and obviously as part of the main uh, product page area, add the cart button in large prominent position. But also on those supplementary items, if I've added to the cart and the page doesn't take me straight there, I might want to add those accessory items to the cart quickly and easily as well. And that's a great option to have. Doesn't distract from the overall buying experience, but helps people add those those uh, supplementary items. So the cart page, um, where where the magic the magic happens, getting that customer over the last uh, the last hurdle. So really um, really important here on on mobile or desktop, and often checkouts. We see a lot of the time when we're asking about templating, how do you want your recommendations designed? How do you want them designed on, on our mobile? Oh, we hadn't really thought about that actually. You know, that kind of um, mentality is, is quite old now and, and really needs to be focused on mobile first and then you can build out your, your desktop experience. So in this case, really showing very clearly the price, the quantity and the items that you've got in the car. I know exactly what, I've added and what I'm going to be purchasing. Quantity adjustment, um, again, depending on the vertical, is, is always really important. Um, obviously, if you're buying a £50,000 watch, it's not quite so important. But you know, in this example where we've got uh, baby clothes, you might want to buy two or three T-shirts and, and different items there. So what does a successful uh, cart page entail. So as we mentioned earlier, making it really clear what options um, you offer together with delivery. Uh, you can look at um, tools like um, Tomando, for example, that, that integrates as a, as a shipping, um, automate your shipping, um, like delivery estimates, carriers, etc. I'm sure there's a, a whole host of other, other um, uh, implementations that uh, markers could go through with, with anyone. Um, so international delivery, is this something that you offer? Be very clear about it straight away that they're not going to get a £50 uh, bill at the end of their um, checkout. That can put people off and give them a bad user experience. It's going to cost you X for international shipping. Make that clear either on the site or, or um, earlier on in the site, but also on the checkout page. If they're eligible for free shipping, how do they, how do they become eligible? It might be um, a basket upsell recommendation on that cart page. Um, it might be a simple banner. Um, obviously, if you can show them the product and the value they need to get to, it's much easier for them to make an informed decision. You can use something clever like a price filter. So if they've got 50 in the cart, uh, 50 pounds worth of, of product in the cart, show them something for another 50 or, or 60, 70 to get them over that line rather than five, 10 pound items. So making sure the products are relevant for them, but relevant for the price point. And obviously with, uh, with returns, super important um, to consider. Customers are, are I think the average uh, from ASOS is like 30, 33% returns or something, um, which seems crazy, but it, it's something that you need to make really clear and can be the difference between someone buying or not if they don't feel confident they can return the item. Um, not to say that it's going to be a you know poorly fitting or bad experience for them, 
but just the, the, the safety and knowledge that they can return it quickly, easily. So again, we drop down to, to how to create a successful cart page here. So proceed to check out button at the top of every, um, of every um, page in, in each stage of the cart. Uh, use a verb to in inspire an action. And uh, obviously make the action really clear. So this is checking out and this is buying right now. So make sure that that's clear for the customer to, to really understand. So again, so no confusion, giving them confidence in your brand, the checkout process, all these things um, add fluidity to the, to the process. And uh, so for, for extra points, obviously, um, discounting can be that the incentive that they need to get over the line. So it might be um, simple things like um, when you spend over X amount, you get a discount. Um, or when customers go to leave the site exit intent, you might be um, offering them a, a small discount. Purchase now, um, here's 10% off, uh, with an opportunity for you to grab their email on the worst case scenario that they, that they don't check out. And, and live chat, um, not something that I've actually, actually used myself, um, but I do think when you're, again, when you're shopping particularly high value items, there's a, a company called The Watch Gallery that does this really well. They offer you like a, a, a buying consultant. When you start browsing a particular watch, they say, do you need any help? Is there anything that you, you, you want to know about this particular item? And they've actually got watch experts on the end of the, on the, end of the chat that can have a proper conversation with you. So yeah, the, the, as I kind of iterated on slightly earlier, um, the impulse purchases at the checkout, just like when you're walking through the aisle of the supermarket and they've got the chewing gum, the chocolate bars, really important to put those, I would say normally lower value items. So you've got added the handbag to cart. It might be an accessory that goes with that handbag, you know, that's, you know, 30 pounds instead of the 150 pounds price of the handbag. And again, uh, just, just reiterating a few kind of key points here around making sure that these are relevant to each customer, uh, but also that there is very, very, um, very clear for them uh, to see what they're getting. They can add it to cart right away. Don't pull them away from the checkout. The page refreshes and it's part of their basket. Um, so we've got a few examples here. Um, so other customers also bought, so social proofing, um, proofing the content uh, that you're showing the customers, but also complementing um, complementing what's in the cart is always really important. Uh, so like I was saying, the accessory with the handbag, for example, or X piece of makeup goes with another piece of makeup. And then also, uh, did you forget an interesting, interesting title? So just not all, all ways and motive ways to inspire, um, inspire customer behavior. And here, the free shipping recommendation that we, that we talked about earlier as well. So a, a selection of, uh, of items you know, and ideas here that can work for lots of different verticals. Actually, one I didn't mention, so in this case, cleaning products um, for, for shoes. So when you're buying suede products, suede orientated cleaning products, when it's plastic trainers, it might just be, be some very, you know, very simple items there. And um, just coming to, to the end of the, of the show now, but 404 page, almost always neglected by customers when we speak to them. What are you doing on the 404 pages? Oh, I don't get many 404s. Well, sadly, we all get 404s from time to time. Uh, and they're one of the highest bounce, uh, bounce rate pages you can, you can have. Um, and so just very simple recommendations uh, like a search box, um, at the top of the bar again at the top of the um, page just help people find the product they're looking for navigation again very important your key categories your hero categories shown off there might be men's women's children or, or sofas chairs etc and then uh, what we like to do is put in kind of three tiers of recommendation because people can land on 404 pages from a multiple um, different um, kind of locations so if they're coming from paid campaigns, it might be a dead link, so an old Google Shopping link that hasn't been cleaned up. Customer arrives on the site, product no longer exists, and so they've got a 404. Oh, well, here's the best sellers for you. You're a brand new customer. Here's some merchandise best sellers that we think you might be interested in. If you're a customer that's ordered or browsing, 
browsing history related or, or, or personalized recommendations or perhaps even um, discounts, uh, discount or promotional items there, but again, relevant to the, the individual. So catering for those, those three kind of key customer segments, loyal customers, browse customers, and, and brand new customers. So that's um, pretty much the end of, uh, end, of our, um, end of our webinar. But we're happy to take any questions for Marcus and I. So um, I'm just going to pause my screen for now. And yeah, happy to take any questions or, or, or feedback from anyone watching. No questions, anyone? Cool. I mean, if we don't have any questions, uh, as mentioned, um, I would uh, would suggest that you guys go ahead and download our Anatomy of an E-Commerce Store piece. Uh, there's a whole whole host of other content uh, content pieces there that might be might be interesting for for you guys. And um, Marcus, I don't know if you've got any, any particular content that, that you think would be interesting for, for these guys around what we've talked about today. Uh, well, um, if somebody's interested in our solution, we can always provide a personal demo. If you want to have a deeper look into Shopware, just get in touch with me. Um, I'm always happy to help you with any regards, any questions. So um, yeah, just get in touch, that's fine. Perfect. Yeah, same same for Nosto as well. So, any any kind of questions around how you set up your your pages and, and any kind of user experience questions that that might come up, as well as personalization, obviously uh, the the kind of core of what we what we do. So yeah, feel free to get in touch with with Marcus or myself. Um, you know, make the most out of the the content that, that both of us have to offer on, on our respective company websites as well. And look forward to, to hearing from some of you or, or, or seeing you seeing you soon. Thanks. Oh, we've got one question. Perfect. So we're actually sending the anatomy piece out to everyone. Cool. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, have a good afternoon, uh, Friday and the weekend. From my side as well. Enjoy the rest of the week, guys. See you soon. Bye.